Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about options pattern in Go. So before I explain what that is, uh, let me give a simple example. So in this case, as you can see, there is a struct called house and this struct has a material which is a string, uh, has fireplace or not which is a bull and floors which is an int. And for every struct, there is like a constructor function. So here there is a constructor function called new house for this house and new house takes three arguments to set its three values and returns the the created house so in this case i have a function called main which simply calls new house and prints the material value of that house so if i run it i see the h dot material is wood which was passed in this function and this default material is a constant here which is basically wood so this looks like a standard way of uh, constructing or initializing the structs and calling those constructors using the particular inputs in a in the correct order so what is the issue in this case so one thing is that if I want a new house with a different material, I'll have to call it again with a different material. But then again, I have to pass some values for the other fields, right? I can't simply just ignore this because this function absolutely takes three arguments. You can't just give one argument and forget the other two. And also the order in which you send these also matters. Plus, because this is an important function here, uh, and you are doing some form of assignment inside that there are more chances of increasing of complexity for this so even if let's say i change it here to always have some default values then later on i will have to use these whatever the values were provided to create a customized house struct so there is nothing wrong per se in using this sort of pattern but there is another pattern called functional options pattern to make this kind of scenarios a bit more easier. So if there was a way to dynamically add the field values for the house where this ordering doesn't matter and you don't always have to give inputs for all these three, then that will take away some complexity from this sort of design pattern. Okay. So now I'm going to show you this basically the same example where this functional options pattern is implemented. So this is the example where you still have this definition of the house struct. And then the first step is to define an option where I'm calling it house option, which is basically of type function, which takes pointer to the house. Okay, so this is a common setting in a functional options pattern in Go. So you define an option, you can just call it option. Here I'm just calling it house option. And this is supposed to be a function which takes pointer to the house. That is basically the first step. The next steps are basically to define config functions like this, which basically return this option type and what that does is basically it does this assignment based on what type of config function this is so this may look a bit complicated but it actually is more expressive in this case so i'm defining this func called uh, with concrete that means it returns a function and what that function does is basically it takes this house pointer and changes only its material value to concrete so it is basically called with concrete and it is changing its material value to concrete. So it may look a bit complicated, but what it basically does is very simple. This just updates the house struct with the concrete material. Okay. Similarly, I have defined without, without fireplace and with floors, with particular number of floors. So without fireplace means obviously the has fireplace field will be false and with floors here i can customize how many floors i want so with floors the number of floors and it is just what it is doing is updating the number of floors in this function okay so this is the second step the first step is to define an option the second step is to create this kind of 
config functions and then the third thing is basically you update the constructor for the struct so before you remember how the constructor used to be so here it used to take the individual values in that particular order and it would just assign them right so now its signature has changed to something more simple here so here all i am doing is taking a number of house option how many it will be it's not uh, decided i mean it can be just one it can be three it can be two anything so so this is a number of options and next what i'm going to do is go through all these options and simply apply that option on a default house value okay so in case there is no option given this will be the default house value where i am setting it with some default material default uh, has fire plus and default number of floors and then i am just applying it applying all the options on this default house and these application will basically change all these values here so this is the new signature of this constructor and the way i can call it from this main function is it looks something like this where i'm creating a house here by calling this new house constructor and here i'm setting with concrete without fireplace and with floors and the number i'm setting it to be three so here i'm dynamically creating a new house struct which is more expressive and which is which is less prone for error because you can give these in any order and the result will still be the same or you don't even have to give all of them and you will still get a default value. So if I run this program, as you can see, when I'm printing the this H2 dot material, it is coming concrete with concrete. So if I let's say just comment it out, I don't care about updating the concrete, I'm just worrying about the other two. And then if I run it, it prints whatever is the default value for that. Okay. So this is a brief and quick overview of uh, how the functional option pattern works in Go. I took this example from this blog post by Soham and I will put this link to this website in the description. If you have any doubts, then feel free to ask in the comment section. Thank you.